Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and today we're going to be going through how to download and do an initial setup of Nina. Now, I'm going to make this into a multi-part video, as um, there's a lot of information to cover, and I want to make it as easy as possible. So, if you need to re-watch uh, something or a part, you can find it individually instead of having to browse through the entire video to find that specific part. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, and I expect there to be questions, so please don't hesitate to ask. You can comment in the video, send me an email, hiddenlightinquiries at gmail.com. Uh, and as I mentioned in the introductory to software video, uh, there is a prerequisite, and that prerequisite for this is ASCOM. ASCOM is a um, device hub, and that is what allows all of the programs to communicate with each other and work as a team to give you a successful imaging session. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is open up your favorite web browser and go to google.com. And then you're going to type in ASCOM. And then you're going to go to ASCOM Astronomy. And you'll see ASCOMstandards.org. And then make sure you download the latest and greatest. In this case, it's 6.6 SP2. You're going to click Download. And then depending on your system, you'll have a box that pops up. Mine is the top right corner. And it'll look something like this where you'll have um, this pop up once it's done you'll click open file now uh, just to pause for a second i've already downloaded all of these so i'm not going to redo them once you click open file there might be a message that pops up do you want to allow uh, this app to make changes to your device just click yes and that'll bring a box that looks like this now uh, you can use defaults Click install, follow everything on there, and that'll put ASCOM on your computer. Now, the next thing that you want to do is go back to google.com, type in Nina, Nina Astronomy, and you'll see Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy. Click on that, download. In this case, the latest and greatest, 2.3. You'll click download. It'll bring up that box again with the um, downloads indicator. And you'll click open file. And if it asks to make changes, hit yes. It'll bring up the Nina installation wizard. Follow those prompts and you'll have Nina on your computer. Once that's done, you'll see Nina come up. Um, you double click and... Uh, now, please forgive me. I, it's been a while, so I don't remember if at this point it'll have you enter in basic information as far as profile goes. Um, if it does, we're going to go through that information right now. If it doesn't, it this should be a default profile. If it doesn't have you put in information, you'll just click load. And Nina will pop up. And what you're going to want to do, you'll have a profile name. Now, you'll see I have a couple of profiles. And why do I have a couple of profiles? Well, I'll go through that. This one is going to be for my Celestron um, Omni XLT150. This one is for my Skywatcher 200P. And the reason I have two is it makes it easier for this part. This is very important to have accurate information, uh, focal length, focal ratio. And why is that? Well, if you've seen my uh, how to choose a telescope and matching camera, you'll know that uh, your focal length will determine your zoom or field of view. Now, this can affect uh, several different pieces. One is going to be framing. You're not going to have an accurate uh, measure as to what your field of view is going to cover. The other is going to be plate solving. Um, Nina will take this information to determine, based off of your camera, which we'll get into camera later, 
Because remember, uh, in the introduction, or I'm sorry, that um, how to choose a telescope and matching camera, your camera, even though this number can be the same, depending on your sensor size, will determine what you have in your field. So Nina will take that information and this information to determine what should be in the field of view. And if it's not, it can throw some things off. And especially with plate solving, plate solving is expecting to be in a certain radius of the target location. And if it's not, it can fail. So it's very important to have this information accurate. Um, this specifically will um, tell what should be in the field. Now, um, when you get into um, location, depending where you are on the planet will determine where stars are located at a given point of time and location in the sky. If that information is incorrect, then it's expecting to have certain stars in certain locations at a given time. And if they're not there, that's where the radius of what plate solving is looking for can fail. Um, this will also affect your go-to accuracy. So you want to go to M16 and next thing you know, you are several arc minutes off and uh, you can't plate solve your way there. Uh, if that's happening, double check this um, and double check your focal length that you have input. Now, going back to here, slew time or I'm sorry, settle time after slew. I have mine set at 15, and the reason is, is as your telescope slews and then it stops, there's going to be uh, a point or a, a given amount of time that it needs to stop vibrations and, you know, get itself situated and in a complete rest state, um, especially with a belt-driven mount like the EQ6R Pro, uh, the belts vibrate. And you want that to have ample time to stop. Otherwise, you will see it in your image. Uh, it can definitely blur out your image. So I have mine set to 15. This is going to be personal to you. You know, experiment with it. See what works for you. Um, when we get into um, plate solving, I recommend getting this set up. Um, Go to is never going to be 100% accurate. So as you're looking for a target, especially when you're framing, uh, you have something framed out exactly how you want it. You go to the target and you start imaging and you realize, wait a minute, this isn't where I put it. You're going to want to plate solve. And what plate solving basically is, is Nina will take the field of view that it's expecting and uh, the location settings and it'll, you know, you, you tell it to go to, we'll take M16 and, and it goes to M16, but it's uh, several arc minutes off. So it's not centered in the frame or maybe you have a specific framing set up and you have it go there and it's several arc minutes off, several arc seconds off. Um, what Nina does is it'll take a picture and it'll take that field of view and it will compare it to where it should be. And it'll basically tell the mount, okay, you think you're here, you're actually over there. So you need to move here, you need to move this many degrees in declination, that many degrees in right ascension. And the telescope will say, okay, and it'll move. And Nina will take another picture and compare it with star charts and either say, okay, now you're good. Or you still have a little bit to go in declination and or right ascension. And it'll do that until it's exactly where it needs to be. Now, how do you set this up? What we're going to do is we're going to go back to google.com. We're going to type in ASTAP and we're going to go to ASTAP Astronomy. 
This is where we want to go. I use the D50 database. Anything to the right is smaller, giving you less um, star charts to go off of. And then the one to the left is, uh, it's very, very big. It's, it's even listed, very large database. I haven't had any issues finding my way with the D50, but you know, this is gonna be your preference. Um, these do require some space, so make sure you have adequate space on your hard drive. And when you click on it, again, it's gonna pop up the download window and you're gonna click open file. But this part, it's very important to know where it saves. We'll get to that in a second. And what I mean by where it saves, for example, mine is in the C drive under program files and there's as tap. You can see my D50. This is very huge. This is a very big file. So again, make sure you have adequate space. Now we're going to get into why that part is important. Plate solver, you have different options. As tap, blind solver, as tap. Use blind solver for failures. So again, if you are outside the tolerance that it's expecting, then um, it'll fail. It'll retry. In my case, I have it set for 10. It'll go to blind. What blind is, it, is it'll just start randomly um, going to different parts of the star charts or different star charts, trying to find where it is and from what I hear this takes a long time to complete so it's very important to make sure your site information is correct your focal length is correct um, the only times I have ever had issues with um, uh, plate solving are self-induced out of focus um, uh, I went to a, a dark site and forgot to update the site information, things like that. Otherwise, I haven't had any failures with it. Um, I have my exposure time on plate solving set for 10 seconds. And the reason for that is uh, I use a narrow band filter. So that cuts down a lot of light. 10 seconds gives me enough time to capture enough stars for it to plate solve. My pointing tolerance, one arc minute. And this brings me very, very, very close to where I need to be. Um, rotation tolerance, one arc, or I'm sorry, one degree. Uh, I use an automatic rotator. So when I'm trying to do a certain rotation, it'll go to within one degree. And it uses plate solving for that as well, which is why I recommend get your plate solving set up. It's very useful. Uh, once you have all of this set up, and, and again, this... This is going to be something you have to play around with, and we'll go into that in the imaging uh, video. You're going to want to click on As Tap, and this is where you need to know where it's saved. So you'd click on here, you'd browse to the folder that it's in, you'd click on the As Tap app, hit Open, and that will put that here. And now Nina knows where to go. Search radius. This is what I was talking about, where it'll search within a certain radius. The higher this number, the longer it's going to take if you're out. So I keep mine at 30. I think 30 is the default. Zero is the default on down sample factor. And maximum objects is the default. So I, I leave these at defaults. The last uh, bit that I would highly recommend as far as setting up Nina initially three-point polar alignment. What you do is you go to available. You'll scroll down to three-point polar alignment. This makes polar aligning extremely easy. I've used um, the hand controller to polar align. I've used the polar scope. Um, I can tell you with this, it takes me less than five minutes to polar align, and I, um, it, it's very accurate. Um, but what you would do is you would simply, uh, over here I already have it installed, but we'll go to one just so you can see. You will have install up there. So you click install and it puts it in and um, that'll be in your imaging tab, right up over here, three point polar align and you set this up. We'll run through um, 
how to use this. Uh, don't pay attention to these. These are defaults and it pops up with default every time. But uh, we'll do another video on how to use that. And that is how you do your initial setup on Nina. And again, we're going to have this as a multi-part series. And uh, we'll go through uh, each one and how to do it. Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, I expect questions. Uh, questions do not offend me. If I didn't explain something thoroughly enough, uh, just ask. You can comment on the video, send me an email, hiddenlightinquiries at gmail.com. Uh, I hope you found this useful. If you did find it useful, please uh, like and subscribe. If you want more content um, like this, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, other than that, stay tuned for the next video. We'll continue on our Nina series and how to set everything up. Um, until then, clear skies.